Hi there, my name is Andrew Stillman, and I work for New Visions for Public Schools as part of the New Visions Cloud Lab. In the work of schools, there is often a need for the adults to log incidents, interventions, conversations, next steps, goals, or other important to track information in a way that results in follow through. And the paper based approach just isn't going to cut it. What would be ideal is a centralized data repository like a Google spreadsheet where we can take advantage of secure access permissions, flexibility, conditional cell coloring, ease of filtering, sharing, charting, and the fact that we can embed this all into a Google site in order to help inform our team's efforts and conversations on behalf of kids. For starters, a Google form that feeds this same cloud spreadsheet database would help lower the bar for teachers who have to perform data entry in the flow of the day on lots of different devices. And Google Forms actually work pretty well on uh, tablets and smartphones while also ensuring a minimum of headache as it means you don't have to open up the backend spreadsheet to be editable by the whole staff. Uh, and because we can use list, multiple choice, and other question types, this helps ensure valid responses like standardized spellings of people's names, which means we can use these for looking up other information. And yet, there's still something missing here, specifically the ability to trigger emails to specific people. For example, if I have a student referral form that comes in with a student name, a referral type, let's say guidance intervention request, and some simple narrative text, ideally that form submission would trigger an email to the adults responsible, e.g. the referring staff member, the student advisor, or the uh, guidance counselor for that student's particular grade level or cohort group. Not only would such a customized workflow be ideal, but we believe this is often exactly where the systems in schools fall short of achieving timely or effective interventions with students. Often these opportunities are missed because caring, hardworking people find themselves too busy to untangle all the wires that need to be connected when it's time to initiate or follow up on supports for a student. Hence, the problem of practice for this video. How can you get a Google form and spreadsheet to behave like a smart email communications hub? So let's go back to our referral system and think through what the solution would look like. When this form is submitted, we're going to want an email that gets CC'd to the referring staff member whose username is collected automatically, let's say, along with a grade level guidance counselor or house dean, depending on the referral type. Our form in this case is oversimplified for the purposes of discussion, but needs to have a few critical elements in place, such as making sure the form is accessible to domain users only and that it automatically collects usernames. This is going to be important for data security and integrity. And if you have ever changing student rosters, like most urban schools, the ability to populate form dropdowns from the spreadsheet itself, i.e. instead of copying and pasting student names every time your roster changes. Um, you'll want to have a look at the Form Ranger script. Not going to be covered in this video, but definitely check it out. Perhaps most importantly, note what we're not putting on the form. Questions about things we already know, such as guidance counselor email address, guidance counselor name, dean email address, these are things we already know, and asking end users to constantly remember and re-enter these names and email addresses is a form of cruelty we would rather avoid. So our first order of business is going to be getting these looked up once the form submissions come in. Once we have the names and emails looked up based on student name, we'll need a custom email to get generated to the correct party with the correct information for that referral. In other words, we'll need a merged email. Lastly, we may want to be able to refer to these submissions in shorthand for the sake of follow-up, i.e. please follow up on case number 34. So we'd like to be able to generate these unique case numbers for each form submission. To accomplish our lookups, we're going to want to create sheets for students, advisors, and deans that contain uh, lookup information to serve as a reference for our different referral types. Then, to the right of our form headers, in the destination sheet for our Google form, we'll create custom columns where we use VLOOKUP, my personal all-time favorite, all favorite spreadsheet function for schools, whose job is to search vertically for a match in the first column of a, of a determined spreadsheet range. So in this case, 
looking for a match for Amanda, let's say, in the range shown to the right. Find the matching row and then pull back the value in that row that is a specified number of columns to the right. In this case, four columns from the leftmost column in that range. Let's try that again. VLOOKUP is a standard spreadsheet function that takes in four arguments and returns a value based on a match. The first argument is a cell reference that points to the thing you are trying to match. So imagine D4 represents Amanda from our previous diagram. It's trying to match this vertically in the first column of a range that might live somewhere else, like in another sheet. So the second argument is that range. It's a rectangular group of cells, in this case, in a different sheet called sheet one, in which the first column is where you expect to find the match, in this case, Amanda. The third argument tells the function to pull back the value that is a specified number of columns to the right of the leftmost column in the defined range. So four, the fourth column, would also be column D in this case, because that's the fourth column in the range we've said to go looking in. And the fourth argument indicates whether you want to assume that your range is sorted alphanumerically, true or false. So sometimes you'll see this represented with a zero or a one. Zero is false, one is true. I always put false or zero. Got that? Please hit rewind if you don't and review this uh, several times. Um, for this kind of thing, also note that it's uh, generally a good idea to wrap VLOOKUP inside of an if error function. This is because if VLOOKUP fails to find a match, it will return an ugly NA error, which has a way of messing things up. If error helps us by returning a nice clean blank value in the case that NA is returned by the function it's wrapped around, just good to know. Um, this all comes together in the destination sheet for form data where we're going to use a combination of what the user submitted in the form and values looked up from the data table to build a custom email to the right people. So we're going to use formulas to go into our two lookup sheets and match against student name and find all these other great pieces of information that we'll use to construct our customized email. Again, think of VLOOKUP as telling a story. Please take a moment and read it for yourselves. All right, does your brain hurt? Just remember that learning VLOOKUP is like picking up any really powerful new tool. The investment in learning will pay you back in lots of delicious tomato soup. So alas, if we have our heads wrapped around VLOOKUP, there's quite a bit we can do with validated form data. We can look up student grade level and house and use these to look up the correct names and email addresses of advisors, guidance counselors, or deans. Now let's move on to the last two bits of functionality. We will need to get the system to auto send emails. First, we need a way to automatically send a totally different email depending on referral type. So we want a different, ref different email for uh, guidance referrals and behavior referrals. Um, secondly, we now have some really powerful formulas in our form submission sheet that unfortunately do not populate for the newly submitted rows of form data. Wah, wah. So when forms come in, our VLOOKUP formulas don't copy themselves down. Getting these two things to happen is a job for the formula script, which is an add-on for Google Sheets written by New Visions precisely to solve the sort of custom communications and workflow challenges that define the work of schools. Formula can be installed from the app script gallery on the old Google Sheets as of early 2014. And we're committed to making it available soon in the new Google Sheets. Uh, and yes, when you're searching for it, remember that there's a double M in the middle of Formula. So you'll want to install and authorize the script and you'll see a new menu item for formula appear in your spreadsheet. You'll run the initial installation, proceed to step one in the formula menu, 
and select the form submission sheet as your merge source, as your data source. You'll also want to see here that uh, the unique case number uh, checkbox is checked. That's going to produce uh, integer number uh, case numbers for each form submission. A suite of options will now open up in the menu. In this example, we're going to follow. We're going to focus only on the use of step two A, the email merge feature. But know that Formula can also merge calendar events and SMS messages in a very similar fashion. For the purposes of this example, we're going to indicate that we want two different possible emails, one for guidance referrals and the other for behavior incidents. Note that these emails are set to send on a matching criteria in the form submission column. Once we save this step, Formula will automatically create two new sheets, one for each email template. These templates come with a list of the merge variables available to us, which we can then use in any of the email fields shown below. So, what you see there uh, with the dollar signs are the variables. Here we fill in the names, email addresses, and relevant fields from the form that we want in the email. Do note that regardless of how we set the reply to address, emails sent by formula will come from the account that installed the script. So consider this carefully before setting up a system like this for your school on your own account. Often we use a role account that is an account that is not a person uh, to send out uh, bulk generated emails like this. So we're at a place where Formula is ready to smartly send emails to the correct individuals on form submit, but we still need to solve our little formula copy down problem. How do we get these, v these lovely VLOOKUP formulas to come down each time a new form submission comes in? Fortunately, Formula contains an advanced feature that will allow us to specify which columns contain formulas that we want copied down before the merge is performed. Just select the advanced options menu item and select copy down formulas on form submit and then designate the columns whose formulas you want copied down on form submit. Note that the ability to choose paste as values is going to uh, replace the, the VLOOKUPs with actual values when, when they copy down, and this will improve spreadsheet performance in the long haul. So generally, this is a good idea to check those bottom check boxes. Now that these copy down options have been selected, we should see a new column for formula copy down status. You'll see it there in purple, which will be used by the script to ensure that emails are only sent for rows that have had their formulas successfully copied down. So these are like places that the script uses to keep track of what it needs to send. Um, two important things here once you've done this, um, if you ever need to add questions to your Google form, um, oh, by the way, this is what the email looks like, beautiful. Um, so if you ever need to add questions to your Google form, be sure to add columns between the last form question header and your formula columns before adding questions to the form. So in other words, anticipate the number of form questions you want to add, insert the number of columns you need. Otherwise, Google will actually overwrite what was in column H, and you'll end up losing formulas, um, which is kind of a drag. The other thing to note is that whenever you change the number or order of columns, you'll want to go back to the advanced options area and resave your formulas. So if you ever redo your formulas and, or tweak them, or if you change the headings or change the, the order of columns, you'll need to come back here and save these settings. Um, other than that, in conclusion, the ability <laughs> to quickly and easily create communications and workflow tools that meet the unique needs of schools is what the New Visions Cloud Lab eats for breakfast. If you're not lucky enough to be part of the New Visions School Support Network here in New York City and you need help, please consider joining the growing community of app script builders and users in Google Plus and sharing your breakthroughs or popping your questions to the community. Also make sure to visit cloudlab.newvisions.org and you'll see a full catalog of tools like this. Thanks a lot. Hope you learned something.